Hello, this is Jeff Ron from Light in Houston, and today we're going to go over the hidden point routine on the CS20 user and RTK unit. And in this case, we're going to go over the bearing distance method. Um, this is, um, we'll go over how to access the hidden point routine, which is really just another word for, for offset. We'll set a hotkey. We'll take a look at the CS20 disto option, and we'll go over the, uh, the bearing distance routine. Typically, this is used for surveying a point like underneath a fence. So if you had a conventional, in the video, we're going to use a GS-14 or GS-07. This could be really handy using a tape. Um, so the GS-18 tilt will make short work of this. Just go out there and take a shot. You don't need to use this routine. But maybe at the end, we'll go over how to use a bearing distance if you're trying to shoot like a pole on a right away. That's where it could come in handy for a GS-18. So as we talked about, let's take a look at this scenario. Uh, we have a iron rod underneath the fence in the corner here. And uh, the previous video, we did a distance distance to this pole pole in the other yard. Okay, so how do we tie this in if we don't have the GS-18 tilt, we're using the GS-14. So to access the, uh, the hidden point routine, we'll go to the measure screen, and then we'll hit function F6 tools, and that'll pull up the hidden point. So we can actually set a hotkey. So if you hit the star key, your favorites, you have set hotkeys. <clears throat> I typically set F7 to be user app tools, and that's the same as hidden function F6 tools. Because this comes in handy, there's also some hit some additional tools in stakeout and other routines that could really come in handy. So let's take a quick look at the different options. So Today we're going to go over the azimuth and distance. We'll take two shots and we'll type in the distance and it'll determine the azimuth from those two points to project to calculate that point P2, which is the hidden point. Um, is, there is an option to do two bearings. I personally don't use this because you'd have to have the CS20 with the disto that has the azimuth uh, compass. And the compass can be a little bit uh, inaccurate at longer distances. So I prefer to use the two distances for tying in points instead of, instead of double bearings. Um, the change and offset changes uh, English for station. That's very similar to what we're doing uh, on the bearing and distance. You just have two points that define the azimuth, and you, you'll tell, tell it how far up and over down that line is. So basically, from the video today, you can figure out the change and offset is very similar to the bearing and distance. All right, so once again, the hidden point is hidden. Uh, if you go to the measure screen, we'll hit function settings, and number one is a hidden point. And uh, in there, we can actually hit function settings to take a look at the settings on, on the hidden point. Okay. In this screen here, if we're doing the bearing and distances, where you pick and pick the four different methods that you want to use. So today, we'll go over the bearing and distance option. And once again, here's the schematic of the bearing and distance. And uh, let's take a quick look at the video. Okay, in this uh, scenario, we create a new job called hidden point number two, and we're gonna do a bearing distance to calculate a point that I'm um, using a tape that could be like a rod underneath a fence. So we go to the, uh, the measure screen, it's gonna pop up. And um, right now, here's our position. So once again, we're fixed. And what we're going to do is I'm going to hit the, the first point here. Um, we're going to walk over here. And our first point is right at four feet. And then we'll level up. This is GS14, non-tilting. And then what I'll do is once again hit function tools and hit number one and hit OK. In this case, we're going to use the bearing distance. So our first point we're going to come off of, we're going to hit the measure key. And it'll come up, say, auxiliary 3, because we've got two other auxiliary points in here. I'm going to hit measure, and we're going to survey that point out. Okay. And the first distance, we're right at distance 4 feet on the tape that's laying down. Okay. Now we'll go up to azimuth, and we're going to use the GPS to determine the azimuth. The tape is laying on the ground, giving us a direction. So we're going to move back to the second pin flag. And this is strictly direction, so I'll just put it online. I'll hit the F4 azimuth button. And then I'll hit measure because I'm shooting a second point. It's basically going to use the azimuth between these two points. So hit F4. 
then auxiliary number four, hit measure, you shoot that in, and what is the direction? Is it towards the hidden point? This is actually from the hidden point, so hit OK, and it's four feet, there's a calculated azimuth from auxiliary three. Once again, the camera, if I had the disc, so I could use the, that to measure the distance. I'll hit calculate, and we'll call this point number two, and we'll store it. We already previously surveyed another point in using um, two other auxiliary points as well. Okay, so um, we could do the other, the other, the other method. So I created a hotkey F7 for user app tools, hidden point. And what we could do is come in here, and I'll just show you how we did the first two, bearing distance, and we used auxiliary one, and it was four feet. And the azimuth, once again, hit F4, and the azimuth point was auxiliary 2, and it in this case it was towards the hidden point. Hit OK. And then once again you've got to hit F1, calculate, and that would be point number 3. So in, in this case I can shoot it twice. Um, that way to check if it's an important shot, and then we can inverse between those points. So you can see there's our auxiliary points on the, the first go around the second go around and here's the two points that we surveyed or calculated off those hidden points. And that's how you do a hidden point using a bearing and distance using the GPS to determine the distance and, and also the, uh, the azimuth. Okay, so once again in the first scenario we, we set up an auxiliary one, shot it in, and that's where we came down, we used bearing distance, came to the, the first point A, it's right here, hit the measure app, we call it auxiliary 1. Then we typed in the horizontal distance, in this scenario it was uh, 4 feet, that's the distance, so it could be anywhere on this arc. The second point is strictly to determine the azimuth, so we scroll up to the azimuth, hit enter, and then measure in this second point, and that would determine the line. So we actually used a tape. I had the tape laying down on the ground, and that way I could move my survey rod, my GPS pole, up that, up that physical tape, and that would give me a good line to tie in this hidden point, the, the rod underneath the fence. We did it twice, um, because what I want to do, this, that's a rod underneath the fence. I could move the tape over, do it a second time, then inverse between those two points to make sure that it's tied in correctly, okay? So in this case here, this is a picture from infinity. So once again, auxiliary one and, and two went from four feet, came up here the second point with strictly line, the computer point number three, and then we came up, shot in point number three, auxiliary point number three, and we went in the, the opposite direction, and it, it took a reverse azimuth, and then point two and point three. They're off, I inversed around point one seven of the foot, it's a little bit sloppy as trying to film and do the hidden point at the same time, but typically those should be like within a tenth of, of, of a foot. And that way you can call them the same name and average them. Um, but that, that way, typically sometimes you're in a tough environment. There might be like trees. And I can just move that tape over, shoot that rod in twice, inverse, make sure it's tied down correctly. So once again, this is this would be really handy if you have a GS14, GSS7, that's, that's not a tilting uh RTK unit. The GS18, I can just go right up on that point, lean over it, and get an RTK shot. I was using, um, you see these auxiliary points for point A and point B. So under settings, number five, customization ID templates. We call these auxiliary points auxiliary one, auxiliary two, auxiliary three. So if you export an ASCII file, the guys in the office know these are strictly construction points. They can delete them out. They go back, and these points here that you shot in included are the actual points that they want to use with the survey data, okay? Uh, so once again, we could use a CS20 LTE with the DISTO. It's got the distance measurement. You can go up to 150 meters, 450 feet, accurate to a couple of millimeters. This is good for distance, distance, but we can also um, use it for bearing and distance as well. Once again, um, I can define where we're taking shots from this DISTO. So it could be from the front of the CS20, from the back, so if I was measuring on the inside of a building, I could just put this up against the wall, take a distance. If this is my pole and the brackets on I have the front of the pole, if it's on the other side, I'd say it's the back of the pole. So once again, 
if you were using the disto, um, we can go in and uh, basically hit uh, function settings and the hidden point, and that would tell we could tell it where our where our data collector is. In this case, it's the front of the pole, and I'm going to uncheck measure using the azimuth because there's a little bit of, of inaccuracy using the compass. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you either use bearing distance or distance distance. So out of GS18, I could still use the point and direction. So maybe if I was on a right away and I got a limited area where I can get an RTK fix, I need to tie, tie, tie in these survey or uh, pile poles. I can take a shot, walk towards that pole, take the measurement with the, the disto, and tie in those points using the, the bearing distance offset. Or maybe there's a big pole behind this fence that we can't get to. I could either use the distance distance or bearing distance say of having to pull out the uh, the total station. So that's just a quick overview of the bearing distance hidden point, and I uh, hope you found that helpful.